This is the third in a series of videos covering the basics of motherboards and computers, seeking to inform and guide those who are new to the building and modifying of computers. In the last two videos, we have looked around a motherboard and also talked about adding memory to your computer. Today we're going to be looking at PSUs, power supply units. All computers need power to run them. This motherboard we have here has a 24 pin ATX connector into which the power supply connects to provide the plus 12 volts, plus 5 volts and plus 3.3 volts DC power. Other motherboards can also have separate connectors for plus 12 volt power delivery to the CPU in the form of 4-pin or 8-pin connectors, depending on the CPU's power demands. There are also some smaller motherboards that take anything from 12 to 21 volts DC power from an external power supply and use a voltage regulator module, a VRM, to convert the DC power from the power supply to the specific voltage levels needed by different components like the CPU's lower voltage requirement. So power supplies have two tasks. They take in the mains voltage in AC, alternating current, and convert that to a lower voltage DC direct current. This lower voltage is then converted to the range of DC voltages needed by the specific motherboard components. Power supplies come in many shapes, sizes and capacities and can also come in either two separate parts or all in one. A power supply suitable for your computer will depend on several factors. How much power the computer needs. Powerful CPUs generally require more watts from the PSU. If you have a graphics card, this too will draw significant power. The other components on the motherboard and any storage drives, these needs have to be counted too. How much space you have available in your computer case or frame for the PSU. If you plan on expanding the computer later, then getting a more powerful PSU now is a good investment. Adding all these wattage requirements together gives you an estimate of the power required. However, it's important to get a PSU that can deliver more than this figure to ensure that, if there are any momentary spikes of power demand, these don't trigger a shutdown of your system. So if your estimate is for a need for 400 watts of power, then get at least a 500 watt PSU, or preferably a 650 watt PSU. If we have a look at the types and sizes of PSUs on the market, we have the ATX, the Advanced Technology Extended Power Supply Unit, the SFX, Small Form Factor Power Supply Unit, the Flex ATX PSU, the All-in-One Gallium Nitride PSU. Gallium Nitride is becoming very popular these days as its components do produce less heat. Pico Style. These are very small power supply units. ATX is the larger style, which is ideal where space in the case is not at a premium. The more modern of these PSUs come with modular cables, allowing you to only plug in the cables you actually need for your build, causing less clutter in the case and thereby improving airflow. Older style PSUs had cables permanently fitted to the PSU itself. Small form factor PSUs are similar to the ATX PSUs, but smaller in size, and ideal where you have less room in your case. Flex ATX and all-in-one gallium nitride PSUs cater for small form factor cases where the power needed ranges from roughly 250 to 500 watts. Pico style PSUs for the smaller and lower power systems one of these is ideal as it separates the AC-DC converter in an external power brick 
and the DC to ATX part of the PSU as a plug-in to the 24-pin socket on the motherboard. These are ideal for where your case is too small to accommodate any of the other power supplies. It's also worth looking at the efficiency of a power supply before you purchase one. The efficiency rating of a power supply is expressed as a percentage and measures the ratio of output power to input power. So if the PSU has an efficiency of 96%, then only 4% of the energy going into it is lost in heat. Heat buildup within your computer case is always an issue, as it needs to be vented to prevent the components overheating. Ideally, get the most efficient PSU you can afford, as it will save you money in the long term. Hopefully this video has provided you some guidance on the range of power supply units that are available. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.